everyone and we're back. My name is Miss Scarlet Tanager and I'm playing some Rule of Rose. I found it! I found the birdie! It's 12, so it's 112. Because orange and green put together was 100. Because it was 45 and 55. So 100 plus 12, 112. I was still close to begin with. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We have to save the bird! No matter how quickly you do this, the outcome? Always the same. Box that says family. Okay, let's try this again. One, one, two. There we go, that's better. And it's still not done yet. July 1930, Daily Flamingo. Husband borrows 60 pounds from a, from wife's 365 pound bank account. That bank account weighs a lot. That's humor, guys. Cause, you know, uh, the people in the Britain land, they use pounds, that's their money. But in the U.S., we have pounds as in how much something weighs. <laughs> 365 pound bank account. How much... How much money, physically, American U.S. dollars, how much paper money, even if you used one dollar bills, would you need to equal 365 pounds? Probably a lot. And I've just completely ignored Yui. Where are we going, Yui? And of course, we went past where we needed to go. Of course. Where are we going, dog? This way? Okay. Back towards Martha. Remember Martha and how she got dragged up the stairs and beaten to death by monsters? Well, if I remember correctly, lots of done loading. We're going back into that room. It's room nine. This room this room is now my favorite room, because it's room nine. Hey look! Look who I found! She's not dead yet, somehow. But she's very, very bloody. Daily Flamingo. Husband borrows yet another 30 pounds from wife's bank account. Okay, it's 30 pounds, right? I don't like when games with medium math. Okay, 30. So what was it to begin with? No, not that one. Let's see, man swipes 60 pounds from 365 pound bank. Okay, so... 365 minus 60 minus 30 is... 275. Yes. I think that's correct. Let's go see. I might have terrible math skills. I usually usually have good math skills. But then again, I'm tired. <laughs> and reasons. You know, now that I think about it, you'd think there'd be some kind of safety latch on the budget boxes? I don't want your red crayons! There, you think there'd be some kind of safety latch on the boxes in case something got stuck in there? Also, where do they get so many boxes with the combination locks that fit perfectly into each other? Because that's a lot of boxes. Especially because they look like they're solid metal, like iron combination locked boxes. Okay, let's try this. Couple. It's two, seven, five. Two. Chi Chi. Um. Single. There we go. <laughs> Didn't think about that. 
Like, wait a moment, what's five in Spanish? One of the few things in Spanish class I actually remember from middle school. Alone. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is not going to end well. She probably sees something very, very different than everybody else does. It's a bloody... Is that Eleanor's dress? I never realized that. That's her dress, isn't it? <laughs> there is nothing in Jennifer's hands. <laughs> he just completely, re just completely removed that. It and then it's there again. Honest. And of course she gets blamed for it. Yes, the bird's dead. Then again, it's implied that the bird is, in, in fact, not alive to begin with. It's implied that the bird is a stuffed animal. Because you see it later and it's stuffed. Not like a taxidermy bird. No, no, it's stuffed like a plushie or something. And hey, look! We're not in the man- or we're not in the fish blimp right now. This? What you're seeing right here? It's the attic from the beginning of the game. How did you get there? How did you get there to that corner? You were not there before. You were downstairs. Oh, hey, look. It's the offering box. The torn, destroyed offering box. And yet Jennifer doesn't question the change of scenery at all. Eleanor gives no fucks. Well, all right then. <laughs> Screw you, Jennifer. You're not allowed inside. Nope. And I passed out again. Seems to be a recurring theme with Jennifer, dear. Oh, wait, no, that's not how Diana said it. How did she say it? <sighs> dear Jennifer! That's better. That's better. How you feeling, honey buns? It's okay, I guess you're fine. What am I looking for again? Oh, thank you. It's her dress again! A slip of paper is beneath the clothing. It's the last page that we needed. The moral, everlasting happiness. We're remembering the promise, bit by bit. Here we go. The bird of happiness. <clears throat> Once, a girl found a big box. The bird of happiness was inside. The bird would take her to Foreverland, or so she hoped. Each box was smaller than the last. In a cramped, dark space, she finally found her little bird. But it was far too little and far too late. The bird was long dead. It had met a bloody fate. The end. The moral? Everlasting happiness is a joke. <laughs> Best children's story ever! The unlucky girl remembered the promise she made to her dear friend, and she wrote it on a chalkboard. So she'd never forget it. So she'd never forget it ever again. Everlasting. So I got two parts of the promise to remember. And of course, Jennifer immediately passes out again. Game. Game. Let's, let's try this again. And oh, you're going to make me save again, aren't you? Game. The, this. There's a way that these kind of things go. I say something. I do the whole gesture and everything. And you very well he times the loading screen to finish. There we go. And she wakes up again. Two more chapters to go. 
Not in the whole game, of course. We still got a couple after that, but two more of this section. They're kind of like mini chapters within the bigger chapter. Except the mermaid one. Good morning, Jennifer. Do you remember anything new? Hmm, I see. You remember one of them. One promise. But that's still not good enough. You're such a silly girl. Hurry, hurry, Jennifer. Read the story, Jennifer. <laughs> <sighs> okay, as long as I don't read the gosh darn mermaid bollocks again. Oh good, it's the goat sisters, okay. I didn't want to accidentally pick up the mermaid one because, as you see, it goes directly into it. The goat sisters. Little sister wrote a letter, ba ba. Big sister munched it up, ba ba. Little sister studied her notes, ba ba. Big sister tore them to shreds, ba ba. Little sister wanted to read Big Sister the letter, so she fetched it from her sister's stump. But with Big Sister dead in the pool of amber blood, who was there to read the letter to? Ba ba. This game is so messed up. I love it. Okay, then you got something to do with two girls, sisters, or sisters. It's just, just one of them just wants the approval of the other one, and the other one, the big sister just goes, nah, screw you, and then she jumps off of a cliff or something, and she dies, and shenanigans and sadness were had, and cake. Then cake. What? The story ends with cake! That's how all stories should end. All stories should end with cake. September 1930, The Goat Sisters. And she's teleported. At least she didn't pass out. When the unlucky girl woke up, the wise-looking princess was in the room. The princess said softly, Meg? Hmm. I think that's her name? It's not here either. If someone else finds it, there must be something very important to you. Why don't you go find it? Oh no, I remember what happens at the end of this chapter. It's so delightfully messed. And again, this entire game is so delightfully messed. Meg's pencil. Well, we've got a dog here. Maybe we can find whatever you wrote with the pencil and then I can give it back to you. Because I'm a good person. Find. Might as well jump up. Jump? Dump all of this stuff. Dump that. Dump that. Dump that, and dump that, and equip. Equip that, because steel pipe. Drop that, and drop that. We'll keep the tin for now, just in case I want to go find some biscuits. Oh. I guess we exit that way. Never mind. There's also something else over here. Lollipop! Lollipop chainsaw! Wah! Lollipops are good. Lollipops and chocolate are some of the best things that you can get because they restore a lot of health, if I remember correctly. And we are definitely going to need it coming up soon. Frickin' mermaid chapter. This game is... This game, this game is the sole reason for my utter hatred of mermaids. I don't like mermaids. Because of this game. And you'll see why when we get to the frickin' mermaid chapter. Anybody here? Hero? Nope, not yet. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be telling the doctor to go somewhere. <laughs> Where are we going, Huey? Wait a minute, are you? Where are you, Huey? Huey? I lost my dog. <laughs> Huey? Go! Where are we going? Okay, we're going the right way. Never mind. Just slowly walk down. Did you see how that was called Meg's Lab? 
If you find her diaries and things, Meg's lab is pretty much her... The place where she researches things. And by researches, I mean she researches things like Stray Dog. Go! Just go, dog. She researches things like Stray Dog and the Legends of Stray Dog. And, um... Also, she researches torture devices. The Red Crayon Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the prince and princess. I promise to love thy neighbor. I shall offer a monthly gift. I shall punish the unfaithful. Honor thy neighbor. I think you failed. Okay, so that's one thing we found. Go! Go, Brown, find me something else. I assume you want me to go this direction. Sector 13 lift. I think we get attacked a lot in this chapter. Not as much as the frickin' mermaid. Hi, Meg. Meggy honey. Megara Meg. Megaly Meg. Megalomaniac Meg. Megalomeg. Megigalo. Ooh, what's that? Ah, that's probably what I'm looking for, isn't it? Yes, it is. Je Jennifer. Takes her a second. Stray dog list. Stray dog notes. The following are notes on the monster stray dog. As ascribed to us by the beautiful princess of the rose. He's big, strong, scarred, loyal, talkative, cleanly, and he kidnaps children who don't do their chores. Current tasks. Stray dog investigation. First floor restroom. Gather notes from rumors scribbled on the walls. Assigned to Susan. So she's investigating the stray dog legend that this princess of the rose keeps telling us about. Let me in. There is one princess that we haven't actually really seen yet. We could have gone to see her because she was in the, uh, she's in the first floor. No, yes, first class. The first class guest sector-ish area. She's over there. In the sick room. But I didn't think of it, so we didn't go to see her. <laughs> Though I don't know if she's there yet or if she's there after these three chapters. I can't remember. But she's important. We'll, we'll, we'll hear about her later. Oh, no. <laughs> Why is there a snowman in the fridge? Oh, wait, is this the room I think it is? Oh, it is! You see that in the back? Here's another thing from the old mysteries pages. You see that in the back right there? Directly to the right of my pipe? It's a noose. Why is there a noose? <laughs> Gimme. I got an ice pick. The ice pick won't be strong if it wasn't so short. Always a take the long range weapon. Love letter. Why was that in the freezer? Oh, Diana, Diana, I love you with all of my heart. Meg. Oh, the things with the hats again. Balls. I can't remember what my attack buttons are. Hi. What's up? Don't you hurt my dog. No. It's bad. Stop on him, Jennifer. Nope, never mind. Get wrecked! Oh, I forgot that I can kind of move around. Sorry about that, guys. My roommate wanted to ask me if I needed to use the rest before she took a shower, but... Boof! Boof! No! No, get off! No! Get off of me! Get off! Get off of me! Brown, help! S not nearly as yes useful as Huey. Come here! Oi! Oh, that didn't help. Oh, so you just got a first taste of what it looks like when you get attacked by one of the monsters. Yeah, it looks like they're humping you. It's uncomfortable, to say the least. Anyway, that gets us back to the end of the video, guys. My name is Miss Scarlet Teenager, and we are playing some Rule of Rose. I'll see you all in the next video.